Welcome back to the template tutorial series. First, for those of you who have been asking me when the next videos would be online, as you've likely noticed, I'm being a little bit slow with releasing new episodes. That's because I'm making these videos in between other projects and I've not managed to find any time to do so recently. It's been quite a busy summer. But thank you for your patience and rest assured, new videos are on their way. So without further ado, let's move on. This current video is about project layout and track organization. First, let's talk about track order. I'll bring up all of the MIDI tracks in my template and quickly scroll through them. As you can see, they are more or less in the same order as instruments would be on paper in an orchestral score, with woodwinds on top, followed by brass, then percussion, and so on. I think that there are a couple of small benefits to this approach, as it allows me to get a broad overview of my orchestration choices makes me adjust faster when jumping between paper scores and Cubase projects. Or perhaps, if you happen to be working with an orchestrator, you might also save a couple of minutes of their time if you're using a familiar track order. But ultimately, what's far more important is that you should establish a track order that you're comfortable with, and then you should stick with it. Once you get accustomed to it, you'll find yourself navigating quickly and instinctively, instead of scrolling up and down trying to find where you decided to place the string section in the current project that you're working on. Regardless of which order you've decided to have the tracks in your project, make sure you group them and make use of folder tracks for these groups. What I do is split each orchestral section into three subgroups, high, low, and ensemble. The ensemble group in this case is a combination of multiple different instruments of the same section, like, for example, here we have low woodwinds from Albion 3, which is a combination of bass clarinets and bassoons and contrabassoons and a few other things. I've chosen to split each orchestral section into three simply because of the number of instruments in my template. There would be too many tracks to view at once if I had an entire section in the same group. I control the visibility of these groups one by one, so I've got corresponding options in Lima for each of the groups that you see. Displaying fewer tracks at a time speeds up navigation a bit. Next, let's talk about track naming. If you want to have a template that is fast to navigate, and especially if you want to make use of Cubase visibility options, then you need to be very specific with your track naming. As you can see in my template, I start the name of each MIDI track with a prefix letter between vertical lines. This prefix is what I then use to control the visibility of each group. For example, hitting Woodwind's high button in Lima hides or shows all of the tracks with a prefix E. I'll explain the exact details on how to set these up in an upcoming video. I use Rack Instruments for VE Pro, which means that I have one MIDI track and one audio return track per instrument. I use similar naming for both, but the audio return does not have a prefix. This makes it easy to find and distinguish from the MIDI track. A very easy way to find your audio track is to use Ctrl F, and I'll show you how. I've currently selected the piccolo from Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds, and now I want to find the corresponding audio track. So, I hit Ctrl F, I type in the first few letters, click, and here we have the correct audio track. I have to note at this point though, that once you're all set up, you'll probably only very rarely need to find the audio return track in the arrange window, and I'll explain why in a minute. I mentioned earlier that VE Pro is set up as rack instruments. Let's have a little look at how that is done. As you can see, all of the orchestral sections are still split between instances. For example, high woodwinds are in the first VE Pro instance, low woodwinds and ensemble woodwinds are in the second. But here I have fewer subdivisions than I did with the MIDI tracks. While the divisions of MIDI tracks were based on visibility considerations, here I'm trying to maximize performance. The general rule of thumb to follow here is that VE Pro seems to perform best with fewer instances but at the same time, you also want to spread out your workload between instances, as they use different cores of your CPU. Your experience might differ slightly, based on your exact setup, but in my experience, if you want to maximize performance, it's all about finding a balance between the total number of instances and how heavily those instances are populated with instruments. Once you have your V Pro Rack instruments set up, with MIDI tracks ready, audio returns created and named as well, you can link your MIDI and audio tracks together in the Inspector tab. Cubase allows you to assign an audio track to each of your MIDI tracks. 
To do so, click on the instrument down here, and then choose the correct audio track here. Once you've done that, you'll be able to see the plugin inserts, effects sends, and the fader of that audio return channel right here in the inspector tab. All of my audio returns are grouped into mix groups, mostly by orchestral section and library. This is where 99% of my mixing happens. I'll often pull down one group a few dB for a specific section of a piece, or boost something else here or there. The basic balance between libraries is also set at this stage. If I want to throw a plugin on all of the instruments of a specific library, I'll put those plugins in the insert slots of my mix groups. Mostly, I also use the mix groups to feed my reverb sends. This means all of the instruments of a single library will get the same amount of reverb, which is what you want most of the time. However, occasionally I'll feed the reverb straight from the audio return track, especially when dealing with solo instruments. Mix groups are summed together to form stems. This is for making deliveries of your material, as sometimes you might be asked to deliver a full mix, but then alongside they might also ask you uh, for a bunch of stems, so that they can have control of those relative levels in the final mix. If you want the combination of your stems played together to sound identical to your full mix, then that comes with another layer of difficulty. Say, for example, you had a compressor on your mix bus. If you would put a copy of that compressor on each stem, you would get a rather different sonic result, as compressors work based on the input levels of the signal. What you want to do instead is to have a sidechain where each stem compressor is listening to a copy of the full mix, and then applying compression to individual stems based on those levels instead. But this is a topic kind of unrelated to templates, so I think it's best left for another time. To finish this video, let's have a quick example to illustrate the things I've just covered. I'm going to start with all of the empty tracks hidden. Let's say that for this example I want to write a simple clarinet phrase. All the clarinets are located in the low woodwinds subgroup, so I'm going to hit the low woodwinds visibility button on the iPad. All of the low woodwinds pop up, and I can now quickly select the exact instrument that I want. I'm going to pick the solo clarinet from Berlin Woodwinds Expansion B. Notice how the iPad display now lists all of the articulations available for this clarinet. The first articulation is activated automatically, and legato is precisely what I want to use here, so we're ready to hit record and play something in. Now, say that I've decided that this clarinet is a little bit too loud for my current mix. I've got a few options that I could use to fix that. I could bring down the whole Berlin Woodwind soloist group in my mix groups, but that would also affect the levels of all of the other instruments in that group. Alternatively, I could either find the audio return track by hitting Ctrl F, like I showed you earlier, or another option is to stay on the MIDI track, engage for right automation on the audio track from the inspector, and create some automation. If you use this method, then you'll want to double check that each project starts without any written automation data though, or you might have a few surprises. In addition to changing the level, I've decided that I want to reduce the low frequencies of this clarinet just a little. That's as easy as opening the inserts tab in the inspector, as this MIDI track is already assigned to the correct audio return track. Now I can throw an EQ plugin in here and make any adjustments that I want. That's all regarding project layout. The next video will talk about how and why you should use expression maps. Thanks for watching, and please leave any questions or comments below.